Hi everybody, welcome to Dance Puppy. Once again, your source for percussion, Afro-Cuban percussion, Latin percussion. I want to thank very much again Dance Puppy for giving me the opportunity to present you this other instrument which is the campana or cowbell. Campana. One of the most fun instruments to play, probably one of the loudest instruments in the orchestra and the salsa band. Uh, you can play Madison Square Garden without a microphone. This is going to be heard by a lot of people just by how it's going to be licking into everybody else's microphone on the bandstand. So this is a loud instrument. But there are some good ways to muffle it and to play around with it. First of all, uh, the campana or cowbell probably was used at some point on the neck of a cow to bring the herd in, uh, you know, the lead cow following everybody and with a different kind of, uh, different kind of device up here. Um, the campana is king in the song music in Cuba. Mm -hmm. And it's used, if you go to see any salsa band today of what we call salsa, that big umbrella that covers so many different styles, if they play a guaracha or they play a guajira or they play a mambo, the bongo player, which is the gentleman or woman that plays this instrument, is going to pick up the campana. Where does the campana comes in the orchestra? The campana comes in the orchestra during usual sections of the music that requires a higher energy musically. What are those sections? The chorus or refrain where the background vocalist or coro sings and then the lead singer or sonero or son, soneo, he sings the lead vocals while the campana is being, being played behind by the bongo player. Um, other sections of the music, uh, on the mambo sections or arranged, pre-arranged, orchestrated horn lines, doing horn solos or doing a loud instrument like the electric guitar if it's amplified, etc. or a synthesizer if it's electrified. You're never going to get into the campana while there is a piano solo or a Cuban tres solo or some soft instrument unless it's pre-arranged that the producer wants something like that in a recording. But I'm giving you just generic rules that this instrument is not an instrument to be picked up as a free for all because the bongo cero is going to pick up this campana and when the bongo cero picks up the campana the conga drummer is going to open up to two drums and the timbalero is going to well sometimes the timbalero may be already in the campana before this opens up finally the section uh, but in general on that section we call it hierro or iron when the timbalero is on the campana the bongo cero is on his campana and the conga drummer is going to be on two drums or three drums depending on what he brought and what different styles is the person playing very important instrument the campana it drives the band it's an actual fun metronome of the band uh, so this instrument needs to be very seriously taken in consideration and playing it with timing all right so i'm going to show you uh base the basic sounds on the campana first how i hold it what I have in my hand is a JCR bell. Uh, a lot of great bells, bell makers are out there. This, this particular time I just happened to grab this JCR bell from New York City. And uh, it's just a rather large bell. Sometimes if the bells are with a narrow mouth, they may sound a little bit upper pitch. You can say in general, with very general terminology, that Colombian salsa tends to use higher pitch sound bell. If you hear, you know, all recordings of Joe Arroyo, uh, Grupo Gale, or Gale, the campana is gonna be a little bit of a higher pitch. Mm? And it's got that different type of drive. When a bongo cero in four or five recordings over the history of a band has the had the same bell, and it's always been playing the same bell in the, in the bandstand and in the recordings, it almost gives a trademark to the sound of the band because it's a very loud and important instrument and a very peculiar pitch. So let me uh, show you the different sounds, how I'm going to hold it. I put the bell and I rest the bell, the angle of the bell, in the hole right there by my thumb. And I hold it with the thumb in the front like that. Some people hold it like this without the thumb in there. I feel that this grip is prone to go. 
so I like to have a full grip and I put my thumb in there uh, now regarding the back I tend to hold it like this with my three fingers around like that and I use this thumb in there uh, and I'm gonna give you the, the sounds of the bell and then I'm gonna tell you some gimmicks that I hear because I hear a lot of gimmicks over 30 years playing this music uh, um, but I'm gonna show you what I think is the correct way and then the different gimmicks that are out there that sometimes create more trouble than helping you hold the beat so uh, the sounds on my right hand I have a stick um, the handle of a hammer can make a great cowbell stick if it's the right size you need hard wood uh, and some sticks are so good and so hard that they end up unwelding or breaking the bell um, so this is made out of plastic and wood combined it's a, not a natural stick and uh, I cover it with tape because it makes it a little bit softer in areas and it protects a little bit the stick because the stick starts getting chewed up by the edge of the bell so I hold the stick with my hand with a regular dorsal grip looking at the back of my hand and a nice strong grip with my index and my thumb and the other hand the other fingers of the hand are there holding the stick right so what I don't want at all in any percussion instrument is the stiffness I don't want to get stiff with this I'm gonna hold it most bongo sellers are gonna play this instrument sitting down because they've been sitting down when they are playing the bongo eh? but you can of course get up and I'm, I may do that in a second so my sounds, the mouth of the bell for which I need to cross the stick about at least one inch or more into the edge of the bell. So in other words, it's not here, but cross. Then the other sound that I have is a high pitch sound on the back of the bell. There are many areas where I can hit that back stroke. I can hit it on the side. It'd be a different type of sound. So I can, I have a lot of melodies in here. But my basic pattern, I'm just going to be going from this sound to this sound. And in a bell that has been wore out by the bongocero for a while, you'll see the sweet spot where he or she has been playing. You'll see that. Right? So the first exercise that I'm going to ask you to do is a very simple exercise. You're going to be going like this. One and two and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just basic quarter notes from one sound to the other one. Simple. Notice that my left hand is accompanying the motion a little bit. I try not to be stiff with the bell and have all the work done by this hand. I want to use my wrist and let these instruments collide without making it this. It's not that, it's just a simple rotation here, light rotation. One and two and three and four and. All right, let's move on to the full campana for song music or guaracha. In a, I'm just going to simply tell you right away that we're going to be learning this in a two, three direction of the clave. So, if you need to refer to the clave video, which was a previous video to this, uh, get informed with the clave. But basically, I'm playing this pattern over this clave. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that being known, I'm going to start myself on one 
when the clave comes in on two. So I don't start together with the clave, I start by myself on the mouth of the bell. I'm gonna subdivide this in two halves and go one and two and three and four and. That was my first bar. One and two and three and four and. So I have one double, excuse me, starting on a single, 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 double. That is single, 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 double. My double is at the end of the two side of the clave being on four and four and. Again, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four and. Now I'm gonna play the second bar of that, which is the three side of the clave. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. Again, slow. One, three, side of the clave. One and two and three and four and. Okay? So let's just put the two patterns together. And once I start putting the two patterns together, you're going to hear that one time you're going to hear a single stroke on the back followed by three doubles on the back. And that's a good way for you to identify the two side of the clave in this pattern. So here we go. One, two, three, four, one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So when I'm here, um, pa, 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 um, pa, 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 pa. Okay, that's your basic pattern. Let's move on forward with this. Some comments that I told you before, some uh, things that are maybe helpful, etc. My first comment to you is going to be this. Play the rhythm very, very, very straight. It's a common mistake of some educators out there, with all due respect, because there's some great teachers out there on the internet, to immediately start telling the student to swing it this way, or swing it that way, or sing, swing it that way. Then the student ends up pick up accents that are to be developed much later, in my humble respect, much later in the development of the, of the musician. So at first, just play it straight. One and two and one, two, three, four. Right? Let's just play with that a lot, a lot with different music, identify on the recordings, etc. What are those accents that I sort of said don't do it right away? Well, sometimes players will accent the second sound of each one of these doubles on the back of the bell. And it's going to sound like this. So you hear this. You can accent that by way even changing a little bit what you hear on the bell. I'm trying to say by avoiding that at first is that don't make something more complicated being your initial focus. Your focus should be remaining in time, playing this instrument pretty straight and relaxed with all the sounds pretty even. If anything, you need to make sure that you carry the weight, the rhythm weight of the band with your beat on one and three. Another gimmicks that I hear out there, and again, como dicen en español, echa la ley, echa la trampa, cada maestrillo con su librillo. You know, all the rules are made to be broken one way or another one, and each different master with their own 
agenda. Uh, some teachers out there, they teach the student to open up the hand for the open tone. Right? Well, uh, that's nice and dandy, but I've played with many great bongo players on the stage. And I very rarely see any person that is playing this at any higher tempo, fast tempo, opening up the fingers and anything like that. Especially when you're making an impact that the bell is going this way. Huh? So I would say personally, again, this may be controversial, but you know, that's why they have the little like button and the dislike button. Uh, hold your time, hold the bell, don't let it escape because if it falls on your toe, it's gonna be painful. Just hold it out there uh, and just have a nice grip on the bell and carry the band. So um, let's play this with some music. Arielito, el productor, musical director. I wanna thank Salsa Rhythm for this great application. So here we have a very basic montuno. Going one, one. You're gonna hear the chord progression changing behind me, right? But for right now, I'm gonna play very straight. I'm gonna identify the two sides of the clavier first and play it for you. One, one. instance there is a horn solo, trumpet solo, trombone solo, sax, uh, and I want to kind of spice out my groove on the bell. Maybe the conguero is going to open up to three drums and start playing variations. The timbalero very likely is going to go to the cymbal and he's going to open up in the cymbal uh, and carry the band in a different way as well. So I have there a little bit of a window to put something different and so you're gonna practice the straight pattern a lot and then you're gonna learn this pattern. I'm gonna go very, very slow. This is also on two, three direction clave, right? It's one, two, three, four. on that tempo. One and two and one, two, three, four.
we're getting close to this chapter. What other patterns you can play in this bell? Well, of course, if the band plays a 6-8 pattern, you need to know on which side of the clavier you are on that 6-8 bell, but there is a very common 6-8 bell pattern that you should learn how to play it also. Uh, that goes like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's called the airway bell or 6 8 African bell pattern. Um, I don't want to go too much in detail on that, but keep it in mind. Let's say the band is playing a cumbia. I'm going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Um, 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 um. playing a merengue very likely if I'm playing the bell myself I didn't pick up a guira a Dominican guira important instrument in the merengue usually played by the bongocero or assistant percussionist eh? in conjunction with the tambora etc but let's just say somebody else is playing that maybe like my timbalero picked up the guira and some the conguero is taking the most of the tambora parts and the merengue parts I'm gonna play straight quarter notes in the merengue so the campanero has a very 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 important role in this music because it's really a timekeeper if the campana is dragging or pushing the band is going to be always pushing ahead of the beat or dragging behind the beat eh? Um, simple ways to understand your lock if you have one and three on the mouth of the bell you look at the conga drummer left hand if he's a right-handed player and you're gonna see his heel toes on the tumbao going pico paco pico un cum heel toe un heel toe un cum heel toe I have drums right here but refer to the tumbao video on this uh, so you can lock to the base on the left hand of the tumbador eh? and look at his left hand and make sure that you're right on top of if anything you're helping him out by pushing a little bit the beat one two three four They're supposed to go with the conga. So get into the collective groove of what's happening. And some bands collectively push a little bit once the chorus or refrain comes in. Some other bands, they settle and they have a great timing and they're very good at holding the tempo. Pushing or dragging slightly collectively is not too much of a problem because it's supposed to be the nature of playing live entertainment and live music. And the dancers, if you don't drag too much or push too much, the dancers are going to enjoy that because they're going to be, hopefully, dancing to your beat. Hmm? Now, if one of the band members, especially the campana player, is pushing or dragging, then it's a problem because we're going to be collectively fighting with the metronome of the band which is it, this instrument again uh, very simple uh, I hope you enjoyed it very much please visit me at musiccandela.com my website it should be right now on the screen and uh, thanks dance puppy if you have any questions you can write in the YouTube line of this and a comment and I'll be happy to respond or otherwise you can email me at my website 
and check out my website there is a lot of uh, downloads uh, for free of my music and be in the lookout for the next recording Tatuajes del Alma in celebration of my band's 30 years it's gonna come out this year in September um, and most importantly keep in tune to Dance Puppy and uh, whether you're a dancer or a percussionist start incurring in both if you play percussion get out there on the dance world support the bands that are playing live if you're a dancer pick up a percussion instrument and understand more what's going on on the bandstand it will give you more of an appreciation and it will give you that energy of saying at the end of a great song oh let's clap for these guys because they're amazing we really need your feedback as uh, as dancers until the next chapter thank you and see you soon <laughs>